If you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to go ahead and get those. Go ahead and share this word. Tag somebody in the comments. I believe that God has something to encourage you today. Um, so since we have been in this virtual church, can y'all believe it's been six months? My God, it has been six months. And since we've been in this virtual church, we've talked a whole lot about how to navigate through challenges, how to deal with disappointment, how to persevere, how to trust, right? And it's been necessary for us to do that because so many people have been tested in their faith in so many ways. It's been challenging, y'all. Since 2020 has come in, I have seen strong people face big giants. And I've seen those that are newer to the faith have to advance much faster than they expected, right? They thought, hey, as soon as I get saved, everything is going to be all right. I'm not going to have to go through the things I went through when I was in the world, but, but it's still been challenging, right? And I've seen the Lord work great miracles, great miracles. I mean, blessing in the pandemic, right? God, I have seen his hand in my life, but at the same time, I've seen and I've experienced some of the hardest tests that I've ever seen. Has anybody been tested in their faith in 2020? Come on. Anybody been tested in their faith? I have, right? I've been tested in my calling, in my leadership, in my work life, and in my family. I've had to reach way down for more trust, and I've had to look way up for more strength. But even through all of that, I have still been pressed and called on to believe, right? To keep going, to keep giving. Come on. It's has anybody been tested but but still pressing? And here's the thing, I'm not by myself. I, I see the names on the live and I know that some of you have had challenges and losses this year that caused you to question everything you said yes to. Come on, <laughs> everything you believed in, right? To the point where some of you didn't know how to react from week to week, right? Do I shout? Or do I be silent? Do I pray or do I cry? Do I fast or do I eat? What do I do? So many questions and so many adjustments. Has anybody had to adjust in 2020? I mean, we're, we're studying crisis management right now in Bible studying. And many of you have been able to relate with Jehoshaphat. You, you've been understanding where he was when he was trying to figure out what to do when he didn't know what to do. Come on. Trying to just, just figure it out. Come on and share. Go ahead and share. Hallelujah. Well, earlier this week, I was laying in the bed and I was not quite awake, but I wasn't all the way asleep. And I was praying in the spirit. Sometimes you don't have words. Sometimes you don't have English words to express where you are. So, so all you got is, a, come on, that's all you got is your, your heavenly language. And, and I heard the Lord say something to me and my eyes kind of popped open. And I said, what now, what? And, 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 and I was, because I was still asleep. You know how that is. But I'm going to share with you what the word was and, and, and then I'm going to be done, I promise. But this is what he said. He said, Lazarus, got it right. Lazarus got it right. Huh. Let's pray. God, I thank you and I praise you for who you are. I thank you, God, for being amazing. I thank you, God, for being present. And I thank you, God, for being the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. God, I'm asking that you would come into this time with us, God, and that you would speak Holy Spirit, our, your servants are listening. I bind up the tricks of the enemy. I bind up distractions. I bind up fear and doubt. And I ask, Lord, that you prime our hearts to receive that which you're saying. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do in me and through me. I thank you, God. And I say it is well with the signal. It is well with our souls. God, and that you have the final say. We love you, God, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So y'all know Lazarus. Y'all know Lazarus, right? The, the story of Lazarus is a familiar one, and it's one that most of us know really well. Well, this week, the Lord really began to deal with me about Lazarus's experience. And if you haven't studied this story, I encourage you to read and study John chapter 11. When we get off the live, don't rush too fast to get away from this. I'm, I'm challenging you 
to really study this word. It will bless you. It's so rich with revelation. But if you're, you're following in your Bibles, we're going to look at a few verses in chapter 11, starting with verses one through six. And we're going to go New King James Version today, God, because guys, because I believe this is this is what he's saying. So this is what it says. Now, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister, Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the, center, the sister sent to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. So I just want to point a few things out to you real quick as we get started. And I want you, if you have your Bibles, to, to get your highlighter. And this, this, Jesus loved this family. He loved this family. The Bible says that he, he knew them to be worshipers and servants. He knew them to be believers. And he had a history with them. You, you heard the description. This is the Mary that, that wiped his feet with her hair. He, he knew them, right? He knew these folks. So immediately from these verses, we are to understand that loving the Lord, come on, and being loved by him does not excuse you from sickness. Mm. It does not keep you from hard times. In fact, come on. In the eyes of the sisters, he was so sick that it warranted a visit from Jesus. Come on. Here's the thing. We talk about all the time with this scripture, but we don't always hold on to it. Listen to me. Jesus responded immediately to the diagnosis. We always focus on the fact that he waited two, day, two days to go and check on him and that Lazarus had been dead for four days before Jesus got there. But what we don't focus on is that he gave the word and the outcome right upon hearing the problem. Come on. He, he immediately heard the problem and responded. It was the manifestation that took the time. Come on. Put, put that scripture back up, Tony. Uh, I want you to see as soon as they told him, as soon as he read that message, my brother is sick. He's sick. As soon as he did, he responded. Come on, that ought to bless somebody that's still waiting on manifestation. As soon as he heard that Lazarus was sick, Jesus responded with this sickness is not unto death. But it's for the glory of God that the son of God may be glorified through it. Come on. He does what we need to do. He immediately lets death and hell know from the outset, from the beginning, that the victory is decided. Come on. Don't let me lose you right here. He acknowledges, y'all, that the sickness is real. He pays attention. He, he does not say that thing ain't real. He does not say, oh, you'll get over it. He does not say it's okay. No, he acknowledges that that sickness is real, but he says out loud immediately that it ain't going to end the way the circumstances look. Come on. Yep. It looks bad. Yep. The pain is real. Yep. They saw something. Yep. I'm in dismay. Yep. My bills are overwhelming me. Yep. My loneliness is real, but come on, somebody. I, 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 come on. But the Lord has said that this thing is not what it looks like. This thing is not to kill me. It's for the glory. Come on. I need somebody to really catch hold of that. I could stop right there and stay. It's not for the, the, the death, but it's for the glory. Come on. We cannot miss the fact that Jesus does not wait until he's outside of the tomb to declare victory. Uh, uh. He leaves no room for misinterpretation. He says, yes, it's real, but it ain't death. <laughs> it ain't death. This sickness has a purpose that is greater than any power that death has. Come on. Can we just pause for a moment and look 
inward at ourselves for a minute? Come on, what is it in your life that you need to go back to Jesus's first response? Come on, is it your wayward child that the Lord told you when he was born that he would do great things? Come on, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like that right now. He's off the chain, right? He's running to and fro. But what did the Lord say first? Come on, is it your career that the Lord told you that you would help so many people, that you would do great things in the marketplace? Come on, but things don't look like that. Money is not coming in. Your clients are not rolling in. People are not buying your product. But what did the Lord say first? <clears throat> Come on. Is it your purpose? Is it your purpose that the Lord told you that your yes would mean salvation and healing for others? But everything is hard right now. Come on. Ministry is hard. People not sowing. You don't get a lot of likes to what you do. Nobody shows up. Come on. But what did the Lord say first? What did he say about you at the beginning? Come on. I cannot let you get sidelined by attempted murder. Come on. I cannot let you throw in the towel off of threats. I need you to understand who the Lord is. And if what he says goes, come on. What did he say to you first? Come on. I can't let you die off of a threat. No, nah, fam, not today. Today I'm here for a perspective check. Today, I'm here to make sure that you don't lose sight of the promise. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is not the, the place in the word for you to, to, to go to sleep. This is where you start to feel your spirit man waking up. This is where I cause you to think. What was Jesus's first response to your situation? What did he say first to you? Come on. Some of us forget that and we get so trapped up in what we see, what's going on around us, what our circumstances are saying. But what did the Lord say first? As soon as he heard that Lazarus was sick, he said, this sickness is not unto death. Come on. Some of y'all need to tell your diagnosis. This sickness is not unto death. Some of y'all need to tell those problems, those, those, all those folks that be on your timeline, be checking your status, come on, that don't believe in what God said about you? Not today, sir. What did the Lord say first? Come on. I can stay there for another 20 minutes, but skip down to verse 11. It says, these things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us all go that we may die with him. Whew, okay. Come on, listen, listen here. There are several times in this story where the folks around Jesus and Lazarus add noise to the situation. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, if you read this story all the way through, you will see the sisters fear and worry, talking, noise, okay? The disciples' lack of discipline and faith, talking, noise, okay? The crowd's nosiness and spectating, come on, noise. Anybody got some spectators? Whew. Come on, Thomas even reminds us that Jesus is a wanted man. So them making the decision to go to Bethany surely means that death uh, of not just Lazarus, but Jesus too, noise. Somebody on this live today needs to tell the noise to cease. I don't know if it's those tormenting thoughts or those doubting family members or your circumstances that are talking, but tell noise to shut up. Noise equals distraction. Noise equals opportunities and open openings for the enemy to try it. There are opportunities to give the enemy entrance to a situation, hear me, to a situation that the Lord has already given the final word about. Don't forget what the Lord said first. Don't let the noise slide in and distract you from what God said first. Tell the noise to shut up. But Jesus does what we need to do. He continues to remind them to keep the focus, to stop missing the message. Come on. 
He says to the disciples, I'm glad I wasn't there when Lazarus died because you obviously have to see to believe. Come on, there's so many of us that just can't go off faith. Come on, we just can't go off what the word says. Some of you are wondering right now, right now, why you have to be in the situation that you're in. Why, if you, if you love me so much, Jesus, why am I suffering in this way? But this story is meant to remind you that Jesus is fully aware who he allows to go through what struggle. Come on. Jesus knew Lazarus well. He knew who Lazarus was. He knew who he was working with. He knew the outcome and he knew the plan. Come on. The Lord told me a long time ago that he puts what you need to survive any test inside of you. He equips you with the courage and the strength and the faith. We just have to tap into it. He does not trust us with tests that we are not equipped to handle. Come on. He does not trust us with tests that we're going to fail. No, everything that you need is already in you. What if this? Listen to me. What if you stop asking why me and instead ask, what is this for? Jesus specifically said that Lazarus's sickness was not for death. It was to bring God glory and not to kill him. He was not caught by surprise. Jesus was not caught by surprise. You might have been caught by surprise when they called you and said your x-rays look like this. It might have took knocked all the wind out of you. When they called you and said your job is done, it might have took you out. But Jesus was not caught by surprise. He confidently responded to the problem that the sickness was not unto death. Come on. Come on. I, I, I hope somebody is catching this. I, I, I really do. Come on. Can I point something else out to you? Throughout this whole story. This whole story that we know so well, all the, 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 the spectators, the crowds, everybody saying he's already dead and, and Mary crying and, and, and asking questions. Jesus even gets uh, um, cries. He weeps, right? He's like, what is going on with y'all? Where's your faith, right? But we see everybody else's reaction to Lazarus's predicament except Lazarus. Where is Lazarus? Lazarus is wrapped up. Lazarus is hidden in the tomb. Lazarus is protected while the plan is being executed. Everything is focused on what is happening around Lazarus, right? The disciples, the sisters, the crowds. But hear this. This is where I need you to turn your ears up. Lazarus only had one responsibility. Y'all. And that was to answer the call. What am I so? Yeah, he had to go through the sickness. Yeah, he had to go through the process. And guess what? He even had to die. But when it was time for the miracle, all he had to do was get up and come out. What am I so? All he had to do was not miss it when his situation shifted from death to life. Come on. Please, saints of God that are on this live, please, saints of God that watch the replay, do not miss the shift because you're so focused on the death. Woo. Please don't get so distracted by what other people are contributing to your process that you lose sight of the victory that was promised to you from the beginning. Come on, please don't miss it. The Lord said at the outset, this sickness is not unto death. It's for the glory. Come on, come on, come on. All you got to do, saints of God, is get up and come out. That's all you got. You got one responsibility. Stop giving in to what everybody's doing around you. That's why you can't tell everybody about your situation. You can't tell everybody what you're going through. Why? Because they will contribute their sadness. They will contribute their worry. They will send their frustration. They will send you all of these things that you'll start focusing on and you will be frustrated. You will be scared. You will be worried because of what everybody else is doing. But hear me when I say this. God knew Lazarus. He knew Lazarus. And so Lazarus was able to go through it because God hit him. But see, what our problem is, is we God is trying to hide us. He's trying to protect us from all of that. But we out here telling it. We out here 
on the loudspeaker. We out there talking about Facebook. I'm going through. I'm sad. Uh, 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 things are hurting me. Pe people are talking about me. Uh, 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 all these things are going on. You out there on Instagram taking sad pictures. You out there with your sad face. I ain't putting no makeup on, looking sad and hurt. Out there looking like just the world is in it. God is trying to hide you. God is saying, get, get somewhere and lay down. Get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and be quiet. I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to cover you up. I'm trying to keep the naysayers away. Lazarus did not have to hear what the crowd was saying. Hear me? Lazarus did not have to hear what sisters were doubting. Lazarus didn't have to hear that. Lazarus was in the tomb. Lazarus had to go through. Yeah, he did. He had to go through, y'all. He died. He died. But guess what? He did not have to be impacted or affected by the people that were outside because he allowed the process to go forward. Look at verse 44. Come on, if you if you if you follow it in your word, look at verse 44 of chapter 11 of John. It says, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. So he went through the process. Come on. He went through the process. He died. He's in the tomb. Jesus heard all this whining, and complaining, all the stuff that's happened with the people. Jesus gets to the tomb, pushes the crowd back, and he calls Lazarus out. And the last thing that Jesus says in this passage is loose him and let him go. So what happens? Jesus releases Lazarus from the test. Jesus releases Lazarus from the test. He releases him from the process. He sets him free. All of this stuff that came with that test now has to go. <clears throat> All of the things that bound him up, all of the things that hid him, they had to release him. Y'all, when Jesus calls Lazarus out, he does not call the sickness out with him, does he? Look at your, look at your Bible. You don't believe me? Look at your Bible. When Jesus calls Lazarus out, he doesn't say, come out, you that was sick. Uh-uh. He says, loose him and let him go. He tells death and sickness to take their hands off and he calls Lazarus. He calls Lazarus the healed one out. He calls Lazarus the living one out of the grave. Some of y'all, some of y'all on this live still need the transition. He's called you out, but you still got on the grave clothes. Come on. You still hanging out in the tomb. You still holding on to the diagnosis. You still looking sick. You ain't washed your face. You ain't got up. You ain't put on nothing new. You still walking, waiting for somebody to say, how you feeling today? No, if God called you out of high blood pressure, heart disease, an abusive relationship, depression, lack, stop acting like that's still your testimony. Loose him and let him go. The Lord is releasing you today. He's saying, take that stuff off and live. Take it off. And guess what? Lazarus did not hesitate. He did not hesitate. It doesn't say in this verse there was a long wait. Nope. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And the very next verse says he came out. He came out. He simply responded to the instruction. Anybody out there going to respond to the call? Anybody going to respond to Jesus telling you to get up and come out? Anybody out there? Can you, he's calling you and he's saying, get up and live. Get up and live. Come on. Come on. I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out of darkness. I'm calling you out of sadness. I'm calling you out of depression. Turn the light on. Get up and come out. Loose him and let him go. I'm getting ready to close. But I need you to understand something. I need you to understand why it is important that you handle your assignments and your tests well. Why is it important that you understand that what the Lord allows has purpose? Why you need to know that what God is doing in and through you has destiny impact. It's got destiny impact. Look at John chapter 12, the very next chapter, the very next chapter. The chapter opens up letting us know that Jesus has returned to Lazarus's house. 
Okay, he, he, he makes us understand that some time has passed by, right? It, it's right before the Passover, you see? Uh, and the word gets out that Jesus is there. Verse nine says, when all the people heard of Jesus's arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man that Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. So I need to bring this, this home for you. The story of Lazarus did not end when he came out of the tomb. His process brought about the salvation of many people. Listen to me. His getting up caused faith to be stirred and change to happen in many people. But guess what else it did? Come on. It got the enemy's attention. Because Lazarus went through the process and he participated in God getting the glory, the enemy wanted his life. Y'all see that? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But check this out. Check, this is the good news. Y'all ready? Come on. This is the good news. The enemy missed it. Woo! The enemy missed it. They should have killed Lazarus before salvation happened. They should have came for him before the glory came. They should have killed him before Jesus showed who death was. Come on, listen, as hard as your hard place is, and I don't take it lightly. I don't take anything away from it. Them hard places be hard. Y'all, I've been through some hard stuff this year. I know you have too, but the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But guess what? The Lord comes that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Listen to me, saints of God. You have got to get up. You have got to come out. You have got to live. You have got to. You've got to cry out like David did in Psalms 118, 17, that I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. You have got to get up. You have got to handle the assignment well. Why? Because you have been equipped to win it. Hell should have taken you out when it had the chance. But guess what? They missed. They missed. So I need you to shed those feelings of failure, of defeat, of death. And I need you to pick up your faith, pick up your renewed mind, pick up your peace. I need you to get right now. Come on, wherever you are. I need you to get unbound from your grave clothes. And I need you to redress. Take that old stuff off. Take that heavy, drab, gray stuff. That's why I put on my happy sweater today. Come on, because I refuse to let hell win. I refuse to let hell have one more minute, one more second. I'm going to put some on, and I'm going to tell hell that you lose again. You missed it. They should have stopped you from getting up, but they missed. They should have stopped you then. Ha. And now they got to pay. Come on. Now they got to pay. Why? Because here comes your purpose. Here comes your testimony. Come on. Here comes your book. Here comes your business. Here comes your healed family. Here comes your worship. Here comes your worship. Come on. I dare somebody right now, right now, wherever you are, to shout off the fact that you're still alive. Woo! Come on. Despite all the hell, despite all the sickness, despite all the opinions, all the attempts on your life, you are still here. Come on, I need somebody. I don't care where you are. Somebody get up and dance. Somebody give a shout because no matter what the enemy tried, it lost. <laughs> despite what your credit said, despite what your past said, despite what the doctor said, you are still here. You are still here. You are still here. You are still here. Who am my soul? Let me calm down, Jesus. Whew. Hell has tried it, y'all. Hell has tried it. It's tried your mind. When it couldn't get your mind, tried your body. Come on, when it couldn't get your body, tried your friends. When it couldn't get your friends, tried your family. Come on, but guess what? You still here. Woo! Still here. Whatever your Lazarus process has been, whether it's now, or it was, it is not unto death. It's for the glory, saints of God. 
It's for the glory, saints of God. It's for the generations that follow you. It's for your children. It's for your grandchildren. It's for your next. My God, I wish I could run right now. I, I wish I had an organ and a dance because I need to speak right now to those of you that have been wrestling with what is next for you, the decisions that have been coming left and right, and the weight of choosing correctly has caused you a whole lot of stress. You didn't know what to do. Well, let me tell you something. The best thing that Lazarus did was wait for the command. The best thing he did was to wait for Jesus' word. He did not move on his sister's feelings. He did not move on the wailing of the crowd. He didn't even move on discomfort. He came out at the word of the Lord. Ooh, that my soul. He came out at the word of the Lord. Shut out all the noise and listen out for the instruction. And when the Lord says go, whew, when the Lord says move, when the Lord says get up, when the Lord says speak, when the Lord says be quiet, when the Lord says write, when the Lord says sing, when the Lord says teach, you do it. You come forth at the word. And the Lord is saying today, come on somebody, you are still here. You have work to do and hell lost again. Hell lost again. Wait on the word of the Lord and then respond. I need some. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Respond to the word of the Lord. Respond to the word of the Lord. And he's saying today, get up. What am I saying? Come out. Take them clothes off. Take, take all that wet, wet winter. Uh, take it off. Take it off. Guess what? Hell lost again. Ooh, that my hell lost again. Hey, come on. That's the song of today. Hell lost again because you're still here. You're still here. And God is still with you. God is still with you. Come on. We, we shouted off Emmanuel a couple of weeks ago because God is still with you. Yes, he is. And he trusts you. Let me, let me just let, listen. He trusts you. He trusts you with this battle. He, he, he trusts you with this test. He trusts you with it. If he did not, he wouldn't have gave it to you. He's not that kind of God. He does not set us up to fail. That's not the kind of God that, he serve, that we serve. He's the kind of God that, that puts stuff in you in advance. He's the kind of God that gives you the wherewithal to stand no matter what comes your way. He's the kind of God that sees in the coming, right? that hard thing coming, and he makes sure that you're fortified. He makes sure that you got your one partner that can pray with you. He makes sure that you got your church. He makes sure that you got your, your provision. He makes sure that you got your right doctor. He makes sure that he got the right loan officer. He makes sure that you got the right publisher. He makes sure that you got everything that you need. That's the kind of God that we serve. So today, I invite you to give God a shout because you're still here. Respond to his word to live. Respond to his word to go forward because he's the kind of God that does exactly what he says. So guess what, Lazarus? It's time to get up. It's time to get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm going off of here because I'm about to shout. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah.